In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I speed up my videos, how I add text, transitions, and also all these cute little stickers. So watch the video till the end. After a very long day of drawing everything and filming everything, now is the time to do the most toughest job of all and that is to edit our videos. And to do that, I'm using my laptop right now and I'm going to transfer all the files from my memory card to the laptop and then from the laptop, I'm going to export all the videos to the movie maker software that I'm using right now and this is a very basic movie maker software and it's very easy to use as well. Once you transfer all your files to the movie maker software, it is going to take some time to process all your videos so that it is easier for you to edit. This is how it looks like once all the files are exported to the movie maker software and as you can see everything is upside down because as I film everything, the camera will be upside down, it's not facing the right side. So the first thing that I do is I'll rotate everything so that it is the right side up like this. Once that's done, I'm going to move on and see whether I want this particular video or not and if I don't want it, then I'll just press the delete button and it will be deleted. Now I'm just going to check at what point I want the video to start and for this video, I think I want it to start somewhere right now. So I'm just going to split that video. To do that, I'm going to press M. That just basically splits that video into two halves and now I'm going to see at what point I want the other section to be and I'm going to split again M and I don't want that middle section so I'm just going to delete that. And this is the basic thing that we all do in video editing. So to recap everything, the space bar, actually it's not a recap, it's a new point. The space bar is for play and pause the video and M is to split that video. And if you want to undo something, then you can just use Ctrl and Z and delete is to delete a video. Sometimes we might want to cut a video at a particular frame and to do that, you have an option in Movie Maker and that is to use the letters J and L. J is to move that video frame by frame backwards and L is to move that video frame by frame forwards so that you can find the frame easily that you want to cut. I'm just going to continue doing the trimming and cutting stuff for the rest of the video. I'm going to check whether I want it or not and then I'll just do the rough cut and this is the rough cut. I know it's technical but this is the rough cut. You can also move the videos up and down through the timeline. For example, I want these five videos to be the intro. If you watched this KitKat drawing video, then you would have seen that it doesn't start plain. It's going to start with the KitKat drawing. And I'm just going to grab all the five videos and I'm going to place it at the beginning. You would have seen in most of my videos that I use the speed up thing. The drawing is either time lapse or sped up ones. And to do that, I just select the video or the footage that I want to be sped up. And then I'll go to the speed option and I'll just type in the number that I want to be sped up. For example, I just typed in 15 and that's going to speed up that video by 15 times. I do this for every single video that I want to be sped up. You can also select multiple videos and do the speed thing once and for all. And sometimes the videos will be so shaky and to avoid that or to minimize that shakiness, I'm going to go to the video stabilization and select the highest option. And this is going to make the video appear quite smooth. Now for the transitions between one video to another video, you have to go to the animations tab. And believe me, there is a lot of animations to choose from. But I don't know why I don't do the crazy ones. I always stick to the simpler ones like the crossfade or the blurred out ones. And you can also change the timings of the transition. It is default at 1 second and 50 millisecond. But you can choose any kind of timing. It's up to you. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to check whether everything is in place. I've added every transition to every file I want. And then I'm going to save the video and I'll choose the recommended for this project option. And that's going to export the highest quality video footage for me. Once that's done, I'm going to transfer that file from my laptop over to my phone so that I can do all the crazy things. I'm going to grab all the stuff that I need to do voiceover and I always begin with voiceover and I'll tell you why in just a few seconds. I'll pop up the screen recording in here in just a few seconds and I'm using the app InShot and it's very easy to use. I'm going to open a new project and I'm going to select the video that we just edited using the Windows Movie Maker and it's going to appear like this. It's going to ask you to select the video orientation and since I'm doing a YouTube video right now, I'm just going to select the orientation to 16 is to 9. As I told you before, I'm going to record the voice first and to do that, I'm going to go to music and select the record thing and then I'm going to do the voiceover for the whole video. 
Oh, and by the way, you can do the same voiceover thing with the Movie Maker software as well, but I just prefer to do it using my phone. The major reason why I do the voiceover first that I told you about is that sometimes the video will be too long or sometimes it won't be in pace or sometimes I just want to cut out a certain portion and that's why I do the voiceover first and now that's what I'm doing. I just don't want this section to be so clumsy so I just cut out certain parts of it and then I'll continue with the voiceover so it's kind of like um, a two-way thing. I do the voiceover, I'll check for the video. If I like it, I'll keep it. If I don't like it, I'll cut it. You can still do transitions between videos and to do that, you have to click on the square thing at the bottom and it's going to show you all the free transitions available and it's quite impressive. And if you want, you can use the paid version also, but I'm just using the free version. Once I'm done with the cutting and trimming voiceover stuff, I'm going to save this video to a considerably low quality and then I'm going to remove all the background noise using the app called Noise Reducer and this just takes off all the noise that you can hear when you record something so the output is going to be so clean and you can also export it as an mp3. Every time I use this app, the volume will be so low, it won't be that kind of loud so to improve that volume i'm going to use another app called the mp3 amplifier and i'm going to boost that volume to at least 200 percent or something like that once the audio is ready i'm going to go back to InShot and i'll copy the project file and i'll replace the audio the recorded audio with this audio so that it's louder and also it's more clearer if i find the volume to be still low then i can increase the volume inside the InShot app as well and now I'm going to embellish my videos with text and stickers and to do that it's so simple you just have to go to the text icon and as you can see I'm typing out my YouTube channel name and there's a lot of script options available there are lots of styles and you can choose the color whatever color you want and also you can choose the spacing between each letters the height of each letters the allocation and also you can add in and out effects for each single text bubble isn't that amazing with this InShot free app yeah, I know. As you can see, this app is so easy to use. You cannot go wrong with this app. And it's just like playing a video game. You just have to play around with it. You have to select all the things here and there and see what that thing does. And that's it. It's so easy to use. If you want some animations within your video, you have to go to stickers and from stickers, go to GIF and then to stickers and then type in all the thing that you want. For example, I'm going to type thumbs up. That's what I want right now. And as you can see, as soon as I type thumbs up, a lot of options shows and I just have to choose one from all these options available. For the final step, I'm going to add some music to the background and if you haven't heard any music from my videos, then you're probably not using your headphones. So do use your headphones to hear some music in my videos. And as you can see, there are lots of featured music in the InShot app as well. And these are loyalty free, but some of them might be. So be careful with what music you use. And you can also use custom music as well that you downloaded from the internet or the YouTube library. There are also lots of effects that you can choose from music effects and now I'm going to adjust the brightness or the contrast. Believe me, I don't do this too much because I don't want the drawing to look fake. I try to keep it real, I try to keep it natural. And if I want some effects like this, you can add that as well. As I said, just play around with the app and you're going to find everything that you need. Once I'm done with everything, I'm going to export it but before that, I'm going to remove the watermark and I just have to watch an ad to remove it for free but if you want, you can use the paid version as well and as you can see, the watermark is removed. And now I'm going to save that video but now I'm going to use a customized resolution and that is 1500 or 1200, something like that but definitely about 1000 and I'm going to save that video and that's it. Your video is done. I know that my video editing process is quite extensive and elaborate but you know what you can customize it as per your liking so I hope you found this video useful and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!